How good is the stun baton actually? That is the question I'm aiming to answer today. The stun baton is arguably the most divisive melee weapon in all of Seven Days to Die, with two school of thoughts. The first school of thought is, the stun baton is total garbage and I hate it. Fair enough. The second school of thought is, the stun baton's really underrated and actually uh, pretty amazing. Now, I've seen both of these opinions all over Twitter, the Seven Days to Die forums, and the YouTube comment sections. And I'm going to aim to find us an answer today. Hello and welcome to the video. I'm not only 25, and today I'm inviting you to my state of the art high tech test HQ. It's in here that we will look to answer some tough questions about the stun button. As is often the case with this type of thing, it's probably best to start by looking at some pros and cons for our subject matter. But first, what is the stun baton? Well, the stun baton is a melee weapon in Seven Days to Die. The description in the game says... Um... Goes zap. No, no, literally, that's what it says. That's all it says there. Let me see if I can explain. It's basically a baton that can gain an electrical charge and stun lock an opponent rendering them temporarily helpless, so that sounds good, right? So why do so many people dislike and dismiss this weapon? Well, the main point people seem to have is... The Stun Baton has low damage. Sorry to say to all the Stun Baton fans, but this is factually correct. I've seen people complain about how the Stun Baton has similar or less damage than a wooden club, and that is actually right. In this chest, I have some wooden clubs and stun batons of each quality level. And the wooden club actually beats the stun baton every single time. So that's it, right? Test over. The stun baton sucks. Toss it out of your inventory and you may as well use a wooden club you can craft from five pieces of wood. Well, no. This school of thought seems to be assuming the stun baton is meant to be used the same as a wooden club. It also neglects to mention what makes the stun baton different. So. What does make the stun baton different? The answer is right in front of us, my friends. The stun. Yes, as you can see here, the stun baton will stun lock enemies in place, while you can continue to pummel them with the baton, throw down a turret, or even get a nice bleed going with a bladed weapon. It can be a great asset to help you in overwhelming situations. Also worth noting here, that the more you perk into the electrocutioner perk, the longer you stunlock your opponent, and the more damage you do. Not every melee weapon is going to be about brute force and bludgeoning everything into oblivion. The different weapons and skill trees allow us to try different approaches and tactics when facing our foes. That is not an insignificant thing for the old baton to have in its back pocket, and it certainly makes it stand out against the wooden club or any other melee weapon for that matter. Okay, so it can stun things. Is that it? Well, that's pretty amazing, but that's not even close to it. You see, in my box of tricks here, I have some additional things to supplement this melee weapon. Firstly, there are three skill books under the Tech Junkie series that will greatly benefit your usage of the stun baton. Tech Junkie Volume 2 Maintenance Keep your robots from becoming junk. Robots and stun batons degrade 20% slower. Tech Junkie Volume 6 Charged Strike this technique gives 25% chance for a regular and 50% chance for power attacks to instantly charge stun batons. Tech Junkie Volume 5 Stun Repulsor Mod Craft a stun repulsor mod for stun batons and send zombies flying off of the charged hit. So the first two we mentioned there are helpful. More common charge strikes and slower degradation are very nice indeed. However, the real game changer there is the stun repulsor mod. If you find this book when you're running stun batons as your primary melee weapon, you've hit the jackpot. Taking just 5 forged steel, 5 duct tape, 10 electrical parts and 5 mechanical parts to craft, this totally changes the performance of the stun baton. So, what does the stun repulsor do? Simply put, it does this. Pretty incredible, right? And it's also outrageously fun. Sending zombies flying away off the charge hits is one of my favourite things to do from a melee standpoint in this game. 
and I'm sure this is what a lot of people hoped for when this weapon was first introduced in previous alphas. This mod really changes things up, and again, it's something the clubs cannot do. This video is not a knock on clubs, they're insanely powerful and they're really fun in their own right, but everyone knows that. But this shows how the stun baton can perform differently, and how it can make up for the lack of its outright damage. So that's a pretty convincing argument for the stun baton, no? But wait, I do have something else. Nerd tats. What are nerd tats? Well, they are a candy that is sometimes available out of a working vendor machine in the game. Once consumed, they will allow stun batons to shock nearby enemies on charged hits. So what use is this? Well, you know those situations you find yourself in, you've got a group of zombies closing in on you, all you can do is swing your melee weapon and hope for the best. This candy will allow you to shock all the nearby enemies with an AoE, which will buy you some valuable time in those situations. But guess what? Stun Repulsor and Nerd Stats work together. So simply put, if you have a Stun Repulsor mod and you have consumed some Nerd Stats, you can do things like this. Sending groups of zombies flying on that charged hit. If you find yourself out late at night with a wandering horde sprinting at you, or if you're in a quest and a ton of zombies are closing in, this combination can send a large group of zombies flying away while you get yourself to safety or compose yourself to go back in and finish the job. This effect is so potent, I even designed a horde base around it. I'll drop some footage in here, but as you can see, we were sending Zeds flying all night. We defeated a horde knight using nothing but this weapon and its added buffs. So is there anything else? Oh yeah, just one small thing. The stun lock works on bears, so that means you can do this to a zombie bear. Now I wouldn't feel too confident doing that with a wooden club. So there we go. I think what it boils down to with the stun baton is a misconception about its primary function, as well as it having a lasting bad reputation from previous alphas. Because yes, this thing used to suck. Back in previous alphas it was incredibly underwhelming, but the new additions that came in Alpha 19 truly changed the game when it comes to this weapon. So how good is the stun baton actually? In my opinion, it's a nicely balanced weapon whereby its low damage output is offset against its great stun, AoE, and repulsor functions. It may not be the most powerful weapon, but it certainly is viable, so why not grab yourself a baton, a repulsor, some nerd sats, and go and find out for yourselves. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, let me know by leaving a like down below. Be sure to check out my Let's Play series called The Mad Scientist, where I did an intellect-only challenge, and if you do want to see daily content, grab a stun button and hit that like button for me. Have a good one, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.